Awesome. <laughs> you like you haven't seen that intro before, have you, Amy? No, I loved it. I was grooving. <laughs> you grooving? Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. We're back with Cisco's Virtual Kitchen or SVK as we call it. Uh, we have a great show lined up here. Plant based chef. Amy is in the house. Hello. And this is our season two show with you. So we're we're once we're sad. This sucks. Yeah. But we're gonna hopefully see you back in season three. So yeah. Hopefully. I would love hopefully. That. Yeah, you gotta come back. I would love that. I'd love that. Well, thank you. And I am sad, but I'm also happy to uh yeah, to be spending this mm-hmm. this morning with you. Awesome. Well, you do amazing stuff and, and you, I always I got like a thousand questions. Alex set us up with some great intel. I was actually bragging about that when I was in Saskatoon this week on some of the things. I'm like, do you guys know this? Um, so we have some great information today. But so, Amy, what are we tackling today? And so, I love the theme. Today. I love the theme today. It's perfect. Me too. It's my favorite. So the weather is getting nicer. Let's all get outside. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the perfect plant-based picnic. So practically applying our plant-based knowledge that we've done over the season. Um, while elevating humble and cost-effective ingredients. So I'll be making a deviled deviled egg salad sandwich with dill and chives, um, some ice cream sandwiches uh, using salted uh, caramel tahini ice cream, and then we'll roll it in some cacao nibs. And then I'm going to make top it all off with some sparkling uh, mint lemonade. So that's what we're in store for today. Nice, nice, nice. Are you, uh, I'm going to run a quick commercial. We'll get back. We're going to see you cook. I, I, you know, I'm just excited about this stuff. I just love, I love plant-based foods. I think it's, yeah, we were talking about this this week uh, at the, at the conference I was at, I was at the Culinary Federation conference in Saskatoon. And I just really love the fact that plant-based food is now a part of what chefs talk about and what chefs do. So, and, and the young chefs, holy cow, Amy, the I young chefs agree. are all over it. I couldn't agree more. I mean, 10, uh, 10, 15 years ago, I mean, I've been cooking for for 25 plus years and it's just so much so much easier <laughs> to uh, to sell the plant the plant-based uh, recipes and the plant-based food um, people are, are really into it for many different reasons um, health sustainability animal welfare um, yeah there's there's just so many reasons to do it awesome so we'll be right back with Amy and I got a lot of questions about health so <laughs> more questions I'm ready for you <laughs> you ready okay here we go I'll be right back, folks, right after this. folks we're back with chef amy plant-based show today chef do you like cisco we launched okay first of all you i I think you used it last show or the show before is the plant-based new simply pasta that we have you use those products right yep i I had some of that on the weekend or this week what was it well sold you know i well here's the thing too and it's not just me people like oh jay works for cisco he's gonna say that but I had I actually watched young chefs eat it. Like I don't know if you call it creeping them out, but I was beside the booth, oh. right? <laughs> that's that's what I was doing. I was <laughs> what they would say, and they all loved it. So it wasn't yeah, just I did too. I was I was surprised, pleasantly surprised. It's very good. It actually is. You know what they were doing? It and our one chef was cooking it right from the bag into the pan with the sauce. You didn't I mean, boil it or anything. We and, talked about that. It's so much faster to cook as well. Yeah, it is. And it was El Dante just beautifully. Um, yeah, it was incredible. It. Yeah, so a little product. plug on our little plug on our products there on <laughs> Why not? So our, our, burger, our burger is a rock star as well. So yeah, I um, but I, I'm seeing so much plant-based restaurants pop up all in the West here. They're all coming now. 
You guys got them ironed out in Ontario. Yeah. No, they're all it's, in the Western, so. it's great. I'm awesome. glad. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear it. Um, so great. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know what I do, it's plant-based uh, cooking, obviously. Um, I'm part of the, the, the forward food team at uh, Humane Society International Canada. And we do, we do the, just that. We go into, we, we talk to chefs, we talk to large and uh, small food operations, um, trying to get more plant-based cuisine on people's menus and in recipes um, through workshops, uh, culinary demonstrations, summits. Um, and the best part about all of our services is that um, is that they're free. So, Sh Chef Amy, how busy are you? You got to be nuts. It's well, yeah. well. <laughs> I know, I know all the other stuff you do, but I'm talking about the demand. When it yes. Comes to oh my goodness, so much. Yeah, I just yeah, I just got called last week to do a a vegan documentary on Chef. So it's yeah, it's it's crazy. It's exploding. It's amazing. I'm so happy and excited about it for, again, for all the reasons I just mentioned, you know, I mean, myself personally, but the, our, our program, the Forward Food Program obviously has an interest in, again, as I mentioned, health, sustainability and animal welfare, um, which is what's like driving consumer demand right now for plant-based foods and beverages today, right? Well, here, here's the other thing too, and you've taught me this over the shows that we've done, is that plant-based food, um, pretty much most of it is very cost-effective. Agreed. Yes, I could. Yes, I couldn't agree more. That's today. Again, we're going with the theme. We're elevating those humble, cost effective ingredients. And we have an amazing resource. Um, we've, we've talked about it in previous shows, but it's on the Friends of HSI website, um, talks about different ways that you can substitute plant based foods uh, for those animal based foods, and then the cost that you're saving, uh, the cost that you're saving. So it's it's not just about, you know, health, sustainability, and animal effort. It's also about your bottom line, too, right? Yeah, exactly, and I think that's that's the beauty of it. So you can, it, it, I always say too, it's kind of like the world's forcing us this way. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. It's forcing your hand, but in a good way. And I mean, yeah. if we're talking about what's recommended too for an overall healthful diet, it's you know, it's what Canada's food guide suggests. You know, you're doing half your plate fruits and veg. You're doing a quarter of your plate whole grains. You're doing a quarter of your plate plant or proteins, mostly plant based protein. Um, so it's you know, it's it's also good for us too. Awesome. Well, get started. Okay, let's do the fact component, and then we'll get into the fun component okay, of the. Do you want me to pull this up? <laughs> yeah, that would be super. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Boom. Wonderful. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to talk about the, or I'm going to demo demonstrate some recipes for the perfect plant-based picnic today. So we're kind of practically applying um, all the things we've learned over this season into one wonderful um, plant-based picnic. So first and foremost, we want to choose. Um, as I mentioned, foods from Canada's food guide. So we're balancing our plate with those whole grains, fruit, veg, and uh, plant-based protein. Um, lots of different options there. Just making it as bright and beautiful and uh, um, appealing as possible. Uh, and then of course, we're using whole plant-based substitutions, which we were just talking about. We have that wonderful resource up on um, uh, Friends of HSI Canada website. So things like using tofu for eggs and breakfast breakfast foods or ground flaxseed for eggs and baking, uh, non-dairy milk for milk, tempeh for ground beef, etc. Um, and there's, you know, again, there's so many other suggestions on that resource on our website. Um, of course, we want, we're wanting to use always just in kitchens in general, uh, seasonal and cost effective ingredients that are easy to find and use. And that's what we're going to be doing uh, specifically today. And then, of course, you always want your food to be satisfying. You want people to leave the, the restaurant or the, um, you know, your food food service operation feeling satisfied, satiated. Um, you know, they're not hungry a half hour later, um, which is often that, that oftentimes can be a mistake with vegan food. Um, you need to make sure that you're utilizing um, whole plant based proteins like soy including edamame, tempeh, tofu, miso, things like beans, legumes, whole grains, and healthy fats like nuts and seeds, um, avocado, minimally processed oils. Those are going to keep you fuller for longer. And there's also just going to make your meal more satisfying. Um, so chef, chef yeah. Amy, I can ask you a question on that. Because <clears throat> that, that is what I always hear, you know, like, let's go for a salad. Ah, I'm going to be eating in an hour. Why? Yeah. Why is that happening? Why does our body see? Here's all the questions. Here I go. Yeah, why are we so hungry? Let's not even word phrase so hungry. But why do people? Is that uh, like an old wise tale or whatever it is? Like, is it a myth that you're hungry after you eat plant based foods an hour later, 
or is it just because your body's using the nutrients more? Why is that? Yeah. And it just, I, I'll answer with, it depends on what plant-based foods you're eating. So if you're just eating an apple, say you're having a snack and you're just eating an apple, apples are great. I love them. I eat, I eat them every day. But if you're just eating an apple, you're going to be hungry maybe 15, 30 minutes later. But if you're eating an apple with say almond butter um, or some sort of protein, uh, it's going to keep you fuller for longer. You're going to feel satiated for longer and you're not going to be um, as hungry. If we're eating um is it for sugar levels, insulin? Yeah, levels? I was just gonna. Yeah, I was just gonna go there. So yeah, so with carbohydrates, if just an apple, um, just a plain apple, is gonna spike your blood sugar levels a little bit, and then they're gonna drop. Uh, yeah. Whereas if you have uh, a protein in addition to it, it's gonna keep, as I say, as I like to say often, it keeps your blood sugar levels even, Stephen. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so when you're making menus and things like that, and you're looking at with like as a chef. Do, do a lot of, well, uh, okay, first of all, I'm going to watch myself here because I don't need a whole bunch of chefs coming after me, but do, do, do a lot of chefs consider that when they're making dishes on menus, the carbohydrates, the nutrition, are they going to be full after this? Or are they just, that's not something that we're maybe moving towards more of to understanding? I think if you were going to an exclusively plant-based restaurant, they generally get it um, okay. because they've experienced it, you know, going to a restaurant and it's, this isn't the case anymore, really. Um, usually there's really great vegetarian or vegan options at most restaurants, but I remember back in the day you'd go and you would get, th you would, things would be taken away as opposed to being yeah. Yeah. exclusively for you. And so that's disappointing. And you're also paying the same, same amount, right? Yeah. Whereas, um, so Restaurant owners, vegan plant-based restaurant owners know this. And so they generally will know, you know, like there's got to be a protein in there to make it satisfying and and and, and worth their time to purchase, right? Yeah, well, I, I just always find that because people, you know, especially in places where let's say it's more blue-collar clientele that you're going after, they're going to have a higher calorie content needed to feed fuller because they're going to get out there and do more activities and so they yeah. go you know, work that way. Um, so I've, I've known that I know that rule, yeah. right? Why, you know, you're going downtown, you can get a little bit less on your plate. People are not, you know, going out there building stuff or being, you know, in, in a workforce, they're sitting at a desk all day. Yeah. So uh, like a little bit there, I, I, I've done that before with menus, but I've never really thought of it within the carbohydrates or the sugars when it comes to plant-based food. So yeah, I think you just can't go wrong again, using Canada's food guide as a model and then obviously fancifying it however you want. It doesn't have to be that round plate with half fruit and veg, a quarter grain, and then, you know, that quarter protein, it can be mixed up and however, whatever form shape, you know, you would, you would like it to be just as long as, you know, it's approximately those ratios get as creative as you absolutely want. Um, but yeah, I think, so as I said, plant-based vegan restaurants, they're, they've got it pretty much nailed. Most, you know, restaurants that are successful do have, you know, a great vegan option and they are taking that, that into consideration. I, and, yeah. I, you know what I was just at, I was in Toronto a few weeks ago and there is a place there that has actually from the West and, and they opened a whole bunch of places in Toronto and their vegan options was incredible. Yeah. Just, and in, in the client, like you're absolutely right. I think restaurants that move towards this and have this and have plant based on their menu are going to do much more because you're the, the 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 population's moving that way. Agreed. And I mean, if you're going in a group with you know friends and family, and there's one person that's vegan or vegetarian, that that's going to probably decide where you're going to yeah. end up. So you need to have a good option on your menu. Good or question, there. as always, Jay. <laughs> I love it. So make sure you get that protein. Make sure you get those healthy fats in there. Um, and then of course we talked about this last week, um, enhancing the flavor in your dishes by properly seasoning, adjusting dishes as needed, using things like herbs, spices, garlic, ginger, vinegars, citrus, um, just using your basic chef skills that you have. Uh, and then of course making it beautiful, which is super easy to do when we're using plant-based foods because they're every color of the rainbow, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the fat component. <laughs> And now we can practically apply it uh, in recipe form. So I'm going to do the the um, the ice cream sandwiches. So we're using chocolate chip cookies from Cisco's. I forget the name. What is the line? The bakery line? This is our baker source. 
Thank you. I knew it was like super obvious. I'm like, it's Baker's something and I've forgotten already. Baker's source. Um, I'm going to use your uh, chocolate chip uh, cookies today. There's also amazing oatmeal raisin that my kids just absolutely love. Um, yeah, they're super delicious, moist, and like, I'll show, I'll show you. They're just really good. <laughs> and so I'm going to use those with um, a salted caramel tahini ice cream, and then I'm going to roll it in cacao nibs. Now, the, um, the recipes generally come from my cookbook. The one that I'm using today is actually from my pal uh, Lauren Toyota's cookbook. It's the salted uh, caramel tahini ice cream. So I'm using, I'm taking her recipe and just twisting it, making it um, a little bit, a teeny bit easier uh, for, for large, for large quantity. Right. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to do a deviled egg salad sandwich with dill and chives. Um, so that's another great, obviously an amazing picnic food, but it could also be good for like grab and go in, in your operation too. And then of course, as I mentioned, I'm going to make a sparkling mint lemonade, which We're gonna, you, know, that, you know what I love about the idea around picnics today. And I'll give some people some ideas around restaurants and picnics because I think, yeah restaurants should be offering picnics to go yeah like a little to-go basket i love that i know I, I know a few of my favorite restaurants did that over the pandemic but i think that's a great option just to keep so just to yeah. keep it's a keeper it's a keeper yeah, and you so. know people are putting up little dining tables and parks there's companies out there that are doing this but you could do that with your restaurant mm -hmm. right you can hire a summer student to just take care of that for you yeah. Uh, and it's, and it's, you know, like, and to me, it's not so much around, I might get shot for this as well, but it's not really around the idea of making a lot of money off of it. It's building your brand out there and creating a buzz that people lean in and listen, go look, look this restaurant's got picnic options. Yeah, it's cool. But definitely a draw for sure. And especially if you're using plant-based options, we can, we can, um, curb those costs so well, uh yeah a disposable basket you can get a you know keep you keep the basket you can put different beverages in there there's so many non-alcohol beverages that you can have in parks oh my gosh you create that same experience like there you go and then you have just a small little branding on there so it's not too cheesy so yeah. people know that and you know because it would be the buzz so first of all the people would take pictures of it Cha-ching. There's going to go for your restaurant. Always, always, always. I'm guilty. <laughs> yeah. And they'd be posting about it. They'd be talking about it. And it just creates your brand in a very simple, and you don't have to do anything other than a basket and give some picnic options. Okay. And they go find the place and location. Yeah. And you can also do, this stuff can be ready-made too. So it's literally, you've already yeah. made it. It's just like, da, 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 fill the basket well, and go. Yeah. And you could do, and you could create that fear of missing out the FOMO and say, <laughs> we have 10 picnic baskets for this weekend. Right, you can put a look. next number. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's a great yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. You go. We just created restaurant picnics. I love it. You You're go. welcome. You're welcome, everyone. You can use that. Take it. Steal it. Run with it. <laughs> okay, right. let's make the ice cream sandwiches. So I'm gonna do that. Um, okay, ingredients for this one: super simple, frozen banana, tahini, uh, coconut milk. Okay. Just regular coconut milk. Um, and then a little maple syrup. So that's what's going in the ice cream. So the tahini, the coconut milk, the so, maple syrup. So the can you can you just share with us what the heck a tahini is? Oh yeah, it's uh, sesame paste. So it's just ground sesame, which it's a ama an amazing source of protein, but also um, calcium as well. Mm. So I've got one banana in there, and we've got the recipes. Um, or this one, as I said, is from my pal Lauren Toyota's uh, new cookbook, Hot for Food All Day, and it's in there. It's page two twenty six or something. Like that she's amazing. Her stuff is amazing. Um, it's all plant based as well. Um, so check her out. Okay, and then I'm gonna put uh, a quarter cup of tahini. Quarter cup of tahini. Yep, and then four hundred mils of coconut milk. So do do people get enough calcium nowadays with plant based? Say that again. Can people get enough calcium with plant plant based? That's a great question. Good one, good one. Of course, yeah. Yeah, not of course. It's it's a commonly asked question. Um and yes, you can. You definitely can. Uh, leafy greens, um, things like tahini, tahini contains calcium. Of course, mm -hmm. if you're, you're no, if you're consuming um, plant-based milk alternatives, you're yep. wanting to, you know, soy milk is a so unsweetened soy milk is a good one. Um, uh, that's the one I, I generally recommend. Uh, 
for protein, but also for calcium. So it's fortified with calcium. Majority of the plant-based milk alternatives um, have been fortified with calcium. So you don't need to worry there. But yeah, leafy greens are really, really high, particularly kale. Um, cauliflower also contains calcium. Yeah. Orange, orange is everywhere, everywhere. Because that, that's probably one of those myths. You're, yes, yes. Iron, I always hear iron. You're not going to get enough iron. Is that true? No. That's another one too. Yeah. So you can do for iron. It's um, I always say the greens and the beans. <laughs> so um, yeah, greens and beans. And then you want to couple it with uh, a vitamin C rich food to help with the bioavailability of it. So I've just tossed in the maple syrup, about two tablespoons. The green and, and the beans. The green and the beans. That should be a t-shirt. It's easy to remember that way. And then you couple it with a vitamin C rich food. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's so many different types of um, legumes out there, right? Like chickpeas are great, sort oh, of yeah. great with iron. Um, yeah, it's it's endless. Tofu, obviously. Tofu is another good source of calcium as well. It's, uh, especially oh, yeah, we got to get this because I asked you this last time, I think. So soya and tofu, to like so soy is in tofu, right? Yes, tofu and is made out of exclusively soy, yeah. Right, okay. Is soy bad for you? Oh, no. <laughs> It's not. No. Okay. And that's, yeah, no, it's not. It's, it's a good, a very good component of a plant-based diet. Super versatile. You can make it taste and look like whatever you want. We're going to use it today for eggs, but yeah, good, complete source of protein. It's not something we need to be scared of. Um, there, you know, was some uh, research many years ago that has now been um, shown not to be true that, um, you know, soy was bad for breast cancer and that's not the case. Yeah, yeah. At all. Actually, what we've seen is that it's actually beneficial for um, beneficial and at the worst, like neutral, but it's not a neutral food because it, yeah. it is a functional food. It helps with cardiovascular, just lowering of like LDL, LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's lots of reasons to eat soy and don't be afraid of it. It is not a food to fear for sure. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah. up and my, then daughter, gonna... I, my daughter always thought that because we heard that. We heard that yeah. exact thing you said there. So some, I'm glad it's some and not, I mean, there's some amazing doctors. I, I work with a couple um, that, you know, some doctors, even when my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, were was telling yeah. her to take it easy on the soy. And it's, yeah, it's just misinformation. So we just need to get the, the new research and information out there for everyone to hear. Okay. Well, okay. you, you blend that. I'm going to run a quick commercial. Okay. 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 Great. See you in a minute. Okay. Fresh food and fresh ideas are at the heart of food and service. Working with the greatest team of supplier partners, Cisco delivers the big brands you expect, the Cisco brands you'll be delighted by, and the specialty items that will set you apart. Cisco also goes to great lengths to ensure that our suppliers and our state-of-the-art distribution warehouses maintain the highest safety standards, often above and beyond government regulations. With Cisco, quality is assured from fresh to finish. Creating memories with food starts with great ingredients. Cisco's brand family includes standout, authentic products such as Arizio's Italian Staples, Butcher's Block Prime Cuts, Cisco Natural Organic Produce with the freshest field favorites, and more. Our brands are produced by partners who share our love for high quality food products and our core values of integrity excellence, teamwork, responsibility, and inclusiveness. Our assortment is always expanding. Find what you need today. The options are endless with Cisco. Visit cisco.ca to learn more. And we're All back. Right. And it's we're blended. <laughs> All good. All smooth. So I'll, I'll turn it over to the kitchen cam and I'll show you the goods. So we've got it's all blended up, super easy, minimal ingredients. And then we're just pouring it into a container here. If you had an ice cream maker, you could put it in there. That would be fine too. Um, this so you're going to make ice cream, cream. this just do, wait, wait, wait. You're gonna make ice cream this way? Yes. This is insane. This is so yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. So this is one option. But if you did, did have an ice cream maker, which I actually have in the corner there, but I'm going to do it this way. Um, okay. You could just pop it in the ice cream maker. That would does every then, chef have an ice cream maker on their counter? What does every chef? I do. Yeah, I chef. do. Oh, yeah, I have two kids. <laughs> <laughs> we don't buy the store-bought stuff. 
Oh, yeah, once in a while. I mean, yesterday was my husband's birthday, and so we did yep. these store-bought ice cream, and it was amazing. But this is also, this is this is so delicious. I've made this many times. Um, as I said, her stuff is so good. And this is, again, we're, we're talking about the fat. We're using the fat um, and then the, um, you know, the protein from the tahini. This is a very satisfying ice cream. Okay, so we've got the base, and then we're just going to drizzle some tahini on it. And wow. then I've made, um, in addition to heat tahini, I've made a, a vegan caramel sauce. Vegan caramel sauce. So you can use the one, the recipe that um, is in the book uses brown sugar, which is totally fine and super delicious. I've made what it makes, before. What, what, what makes it non-vegan? Uh, butter. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you can use, you know, coconut oil or, um, or a vegan butter if you wanted to. Yeah, and then, so this... In my vegan caramel, it's just um, dates pureed with a little bit of water, maple syrup, and vanilla, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna. Oh, it's so dark. Yeah, it's the dates, but it's so lovely. The vanilla adds a little something. The dates make it super sweet, um, and then the maple syrup is just like a nice finishing note, right? The, okay. the, that's it. Oh. And then I'm like, I, I get blown away. I'm always <laughs> blown away. You make stuff that's like plant based. It's just crazy. I'm so happy. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> it's really cool. Thank like you're you. from a chef, from a chef, which I'm by no means am. It's just amazing to see all these great ideas. Gives more people things to play with. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Okay, and then I'm just sprinkling some sea salt on top. You could put the um, salt in the caramel sauce, which is what Lauren does, but um, I'm just sprinkling it on top. And then all you do is you put that into the freezer and, uh, and then before you'd like to, um, serve it, you just let it sit for, you know, a half hour to 45 minutes on the counter and then you're able to, to scoop it out. But of course, if you're using an ice cream machine, that's, it's going to be easy, easy and, um, ready to go within, you know, 20, 25 minutes. So I'm going to pop that into the freezer and by, you know, the magic of TV, Oh, Are you just kidding me? <laughs> it's already done. And that's the final version. And so I'm going to use, I'm going to make um, ice cream sandwiches today using your cookies, which I love. So check these out. Okay. These so are these the Oreo raisin. Now these are plant-based cookies. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, you're not using eggs or, or dairy, right? And if you wanted to make your own, of course, you're able to. But this is a, you know, this saves you a little bit of time. And these cookies are so good. Moist, chewy. Look at the color, like the bread. I know. They're amazing. So, so, so I got to ask you this, Amy. Okay, here's, 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 here's another question for you. I love it. Which, okay, so if you go into a restaurant, coffee shop. Yes. Okay. Not naming them. And there was a plant-based cookie and a non-plant-based cookie. Mm -hmm. I bet you, you will see the plant-based cookies go first. Would you agree? Okay, so this is anecdotal. I don't have proper research supporting this, but um, I would agree with you. There's a, I have a coffee shop um, that's close by that's my absolute favorite. And uh, and all, I have to get there early if I want anything. They have these amazing chocolate tahini cookies. Um, they have like different, you know, different plant-based muffins and they usually, they do usually go first. You're right. Yeah, and you know, I say that is that the in restaurants, please, you have to cater to the crowd that's dining out. I it's millennials and Gen Z. The, and, and millennials are even getting more in thrifty now as they have families and everything else. It's the Gen Z out there that are like, oh, I'll buy three cookies or I'll buy whatever. <laughs> yeah. it is. Get, they spend their income on dining out more than any generation in the history of dining out. Oh is Gen Z. I, I didn't know that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So I just used a little um, lid to make a nice ring for my cookie. Um, obviously, you could freeze this in logs and then just do slices. Whatever your operation uses and does, do that. I'm just at home. So I just used a, a lid, a canning lid. <laughs> and then I just put it on. Okay, you can see that. It's nice and ooey gooey. Oh Are you goodness. kidding me? Okay, and then I'm going to use, I'm getting it everywhere right now, but. Then I'm going to use cacao nibs, and I'm just going to roll it in. Whoa, 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 you can't throw this stuff out without telling me what it is. What is that? 
What is the that? Cacao, the cacao nibs? Yeah, it's just, yeah, what's it? It's, um, you know, it's before what chocolate is. <laughs> Essentially. Check Are that you out. You just yeah. made that with our baker or Cisco cookies. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in the freezer to let it set. And again, you could make these ahead of time, right? And wrap them up and throw them in your freezer and then just, you know, not forget about them. Obviously you can't forget about them because they're delicious, but um, they're ready to go. You can just pop them in somebody's picnic basket or serve it, you know. Oh, no, here's how I do it. This is my way of doing this. I'd have an ice cream cookie and a coffee for X amount of money. That's that. what I would. I yeah. love that. And you could use this would go well in coffee too. You know how you put these oh. That would be so yummy. You're so right, like a little scoop on top. Yeah, there's so many ways you could use this ice cream. Milkshakes, like it's just, it's the, it's endless. And of course, once you've you've made it, you can put it into pints and put it in the in the fridge, right? You, okay. Like that's just blown away. Yay! All right, so I'm gonna get things set up for the deviled egg salad sandwiches. If you have another commercial you'd like yes, to share, I do. I, I have tons of commercials. Amazing. Okay. Here we go. See this you one. In a a minute 37, we'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Noted. Cisco is Canada's leading restaurant supplier with more than 14 locations across the country, servicing every province and territory. We are grateful for our partnerships and proud to service our customers from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, BC. With the most distribution sites in Canada, we are recognized for our national reach and local connection. Cisco services every community size, from every major city to every small town. We are relentlessly innovating to ensure you have the products and services you need, no matter your location, with a coverage area that's continuously expanding. A partnership with Cisco guarantees access to the industry's best distribution network, keeping you on trend and stocked with fresh products and fresh ideas. Cisco Canada provides a broad range of food and non-food products to both independent and chain restaurant customers and other away from home locations such as healthcare and educational facilities. No matter your cuisine type or culinary capabilities, we can help. Our products are sourced locally in Canada and within our specialized global network of responsible suppliers. Our categories include meat and poultry, seafood, dairy, produce, bakery and desserts, food service supplies, beverages, specialty and world food products, and pantry staples. Locally focused, our regional teams provide the hands-on customer service that sets us apart, ensuring you have what you need when you need it. Visit cisco.ca to learn more. All right, Amy, we're back. Amazing. Okay, so we're just going to jump right in. I've got all the ingredients for the uh, deviled egg salad sandwiches. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's like egg salad sandwiches, but we're going to use a little bit of paprika, essentially, and put some dill and, and scallions and stuff in it to make it fancy. Um, so I've got tofu here. This is firm tofu. You can use, um, you know, medium firm, anywhere from medium to medium, uh, medium firm or firm. Um, I wouldn't go extra firm. Uh, you do want a little bit of jiggle <laughs> to your tofu just to simulate the, to simulate the egg. Um, and I've got some vegan mayo. Um, so we've got the recipe for this uh, on our website, but we also have a plant-based vegan mayo recipe uh, as well. If you're wanting to make your own, which you're welcome to. There are so many great commercially made vegan mayos out there, though, if you want to skip that step, I'm skipping it today. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to do that, put that in a little bit of Dijon, a little bit of turmeric for that, uh, that bright, beautiful color also contains lots of antioxidants, as we know, specifically for right. a little bit of nutritional yeast. Um, it, it enhances the, the, um, the nutrient profile. So it's very high in B vitamins, also a complete protein also adds like a nice kind of like nutty, cheesy taste to your eggs and then smoked paprika. And then over here, this little, um, spice dish, I've got some black pepper, some, uh, garlic powder and some celery seeds, and then a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And then of course the star ingredient, which is the black salt. You can see that there. The black that salt. Has this sulfurous like, taste and uh, and smell and it makes it kind of eggy oh. yeah so we're just going to plop it all in and then I've got, I've got some fresh herbs 
um, and scallions to throw in as well. So oh. just plop everything in there and mix it up. This can be uh, made in advance. And the reason why I'm using garlic powder is for that reason, um, because you can, you, you'll want to make it in advance and you don't want to put fresh garlic in, especially if it's going to sit in the, the fridge for more than two days, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. So yeah. chef, I have, a, I have more questions for you. Please. Yeah. So I'm seeing more people define plant-based and I don't want to say it's a movement because it's here to stay, but it's plant forward. Have you heard that now? Plant forward. Yeah. Of yeah. Plant yeah. Do you agree with that? Is that something that we should be starting to use as a terminology? Yeah, I think so. I think it's great. Yeah. If, I think, and it just, it just describes what you're, what you're looking at, what you're doing. Right. So yeah. with plant-based for me, I, I think generally think exclusively plant-based, plant-based. So you're looking at fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, whole grains, good quality plant-based protein. When I think yeah. when we say plant forward, I generally think of something that's the majority of the ingredients or the majority of the menu are plants, but there is some animal products present. That's how, okay. how I define it, how I think the World Health Organization defines it as well. Yeah, I, I just think that we're like we should. I, I like the way of thinking plant forward because it's just the movement's going forward, too. Yeah. I love, yeah, I love it too. And I also think we should just always meet people where they're at, never make people feel like, you know, they're lesser than because they don't eat exclusively plant-based. That's not real. That's not real life. Um, you know, meet people where they're at. It's good to encourage the consumption, more consumption of plants because of, you know, many reasons, um, health in particular, but obviously environmental and animal welfare reasons as well. But well, does that, like, that, I know that Alex, Alex and there's some information here. Yeah, it's just plant -based food. Plant-based food is really driven by the demand for sustainability and animal welfare. Do you see it also now just on health? Oh, sorry, there was health there. Health yeah. is the food. Do you think that's the key one now, or is it still welfare of animals? I really think it's. Um, or it's all. I think it's. I think it's sustainability and health mostly, and then people afterwards are like oh yeah and bonus we really get to like care about animals too right like it's such a important thing for me when i first started going plant-based it was mostly about health and then i started re reading more about the the environmental and animal um implications and i was like oh okay well, that's how that's why i'm staying plant-based you know what i mean mm -hmm. for those okay i'm gonna throw in some scallions but yeah throw out some of those wonderful statistics that um, have been compiled by our team. There's some good ones in there. So you can obviously put in whatever you would like into your um, into your egg salad um, or tofu salad. Mm -hmm. But these are some of the things I like. The fresh herbs. We were talking about that the last time, making sure that we're, you know, making things flavorful mm -hmm. using fresh herbs and things like that. Okay, I've got some chives. I don't know about you, um, Jay, but my garden is going crazy with herbs, and I'm loving well, it. My son's planted potatoes. She's like getting into gardening. Yeah. Fourteen year, fourteen today, and they're both yeah. are they're both my boys, and they're, both, they're huge into gardening. And now I think they came from my dad. My dad was the same way. I love that so much. Oh my goodness, we've got a couple watermelons in our garden for that. Like my kids just and strawberries because they just like. It's like, it's like an experiment, right? Like yeah. they like to see things grow and water well, them. I have like those kids because when they want to go out, they want to go to the Italian bakery. <laughs> Who doesn't? I don't blame them. <laughs> I know, like, it's just like, what? <laughs> like, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. I love that. I love that um, they get traits from their, their grandparents too. So important my dad, dad so i grew up on a farm three hours southwest of toronto there's been many things over the years i'm seventh generation and uh and my dad's a farmer okay. just retired at the age of um 74 oh my goodness last year so this year he's not farming but anyways my kids like to go in the yard and dig they take their shirts off and they talk one pretends that he's grandpa and one pretends that he's grandma <laughs> they're they're being they're farmers it's just it's so lovely so lovely to make that connection between how your food's grown and then and then eating it, right? Particularly, yeah, really. super important. 
Okay, so I've put in all the herbs here. So it's good to go. It's really herby. Okay. Which I love. And then I'm going to put in the secret ingredient. Drum roll, please. This is what I used, if you remember, when I made those fried tofu sandwiches. Oh, so easy to make. Um, and it's delicious. It's so delicious. And then, of course, adds a little bit of salt, too, right? You could throw in some lemon zest or juice, too, if you wanted. Mm -hmm. There you go. Ta-da! And I'm going to put it on some bread. You, Amy, question. <laughs> yeah. In a few minutes, that's not a question. I know the population that we see here is around 18 to 34 have tried plant-based and 89 enjoy the taste. Do you think that age is going to grow into like the forties and fifties more and more? I think, think so. I mean, as time passes for sure, but um, yeah, I think, I think it really, I think, I think it's here to stay and it's just stuff that like, again, your grandmother, your mother, your aunt, your mm -hmm. caretaker has told you like, you just eat more vegetables, right? more yeah. fruits and vegetables it's good for you like it's 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 not you know brand new information um for example my dad uh you know switched over to a mostly plant-based diet probably about you know 10 15 years ago yeah and uh, he was like a meat and potatoes man and i and very stubborn and he you know if he can do it anybody can <laughs> yeah. yeah i agree so I think I agree. So I'll plop this on. I'm putting the, the lettuce on. You could throw some more mayo on here too if you like mayo, which I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Oh my gosh. Actually, I know a few people and I'm like, you're crazy. It's the best. Okay. And then I've got some nice heirloom tomatoes here. Have you noticed tomatoes really like being beautiful right now? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Yes. Hold that back. Okay. I was going to say, am I the only one noticing? Like, no, like, you are not. And I have so many right now in my kitchen and they're all so beautiful. And I just like sometimes make little noises in my kitchen and my kids are like, are you okay, mommy? I'm like, just admiring the tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these guys are so nice. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Love, love, love. Beautiful. I'm a big fan. I don't know about you, what you do, Jay, but I like to put a little bit of um, salt on my tomatoes. Oh, are you? That's my dad. Love it. My dad was salt. He would just eat tomatoes with salt, period. Fuck. So would my dad. So well, very similar. I'm going to say, gonna say, but he used to do, you got me memory. I forgot about that. And there was like pepper and salt. And he would just eat a tomato sliced. And he did, I can hear him doing yep. that. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Right. And then we just, yeah, that's it. That's it. We're done. You could make, I've got wraps too. I mean, if you wanted to really make sure that the stuff is not falling out, you could do it in wrap form as well. Um, are you going to put it, are you going to make that sandwich though and then have a bite so you can take a picture of it and put it all over social? <laughs> yeah. We do. Okay, we'll finish it. We'll finish this one first. And then, I mean, we did, the, I did say it was double date. So we put it, we'll sprinkle a little bit of this guy on top too. A little bit of paprika on the, so I would like I've served these open face before, and in that case, you would sprinkle just a little bit of paprika on the top, which is like double yeah. Um, And then we will cut this bad boy. You could also do nice little like bites too, if you had some Boston like or some like bib lettuce, and like just put a little bit of of the egg salad inside and serve it. Cool. Very cool. See, look at that. Color looks great. Yeah, it's the the herbs, the herbs yeah. the show. Okay, I'm gonna pull it up. That's right. That's right. Wait, just one second. Let me get my camera. <laughs> okay. Well, if it okay. was those eyeballs, those the 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 burger one was your eyeball. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Yay! There you go. Okay, I will take a bite for you though. Okay. But this is—I mean, if you, if you didn't want it to be messy, you could put it in wrap form. Kind of be ladylike. You could put it in wrap in a wrap instead of um, on bread. You didn't need to fall over, fall over, fall everywhere. 
the picture I have. Let me just read that. Okay, do it again. Here we go. Go for it. There we go. Okay, perfect. Done. Mm, mm, so good. good. I'm using a whole grain rye bread too. So good. Yeah. Yum. Okay. Whole grain rye. Yeah. And then you could do this if you wanted to. Hey, quick question, totally off subject, but in the in the area. <laughs> is sourdough bread better for people with like diabetes or what's it sugar? Um, then, so whole, bread? Whole, whole grain bread in general is what would be recommended. So ones that again we're using complex carbohydrates, not simple, keeping your blood sugar levels even. You're gonna pair it with a protein. Um, so sourdough, um, I actually get an amazing whole grain sourdough that we eat daily here. And I, yeah, not only is it fermented, but it's also got whole grains in there. So that would be like my preferred, um, preferred? And it taste. And it tastes amazing too. Like, it's not like you have to compromise on flavor, but yeah, whole grains is really what you want to be focusing on. Um, uh, the complex carbohydrates. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, good question. Well, thank you, first of all, for all the things you've done over this last year. Can you believe it's been like a year since we started doing these? I can't. I can't. I can't. It's been wonderful. It's been, well, no, it's been an absolute blast. So thank you for all the things you've done over this year. You've educated us, educated myself as well, a million times on plant-based. Look at that. It's beautiful. Yeah. Those are wrap, the wraps, too. Okay. And then I just have a quick little um, lemonade if you want to check that out. Heck, yeah. Okay. Always have really quickly. So um, you can't have a picnic without lemonade, in my humble opinion. I'm with you on that. And I'm gonna do a little bit of you mint. Put the, you didn't even have the cheesy music in the back of today, ladies. <laughs> I love that. I love it. You know I love it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Great. So if you're wanting to take this on a picnic, I'd start with just making the concentrates with just um, you know, juicing some lemons. Um, so just juicing some lemons. <laughs> I'm very curious on this one. Yeah, it's and it's easy. I mean, it's lemonade is generally plant-based. You don't have to worry about animal products sneaking in there. Yeah. So just make, yeah, so just juice your lemons. Obviously, if you're gonna, um, you know, bake later, uh, I would zest the lemons and then just throw the zest in a little re reusable bag and then toss it in the freezer for, you know, your baking or bit flavor enhancing later on. And so I've got a little bit of water in here already. And that was one lemon. There doesn't seem to be any seeds in that one. So we hit the jackpot there. <laughs> Put that in there, easy peasy. And then uh, I use maple syrup as a sweetener. You could use simple syrup if you wanted to. And then what you would do, put a couple, you know, mint leaves in there. You could use lavender in my cookbook. I actually use, I use lavender. So this recipe is in the long table cookbook, plant-based recipes for optimal health. Um, if you wanted to check that out, that recipe is in there, but uses lavender instead of mint. We've got lots there. And then you would just put the lid on, shake it up. And then when you're ready to serve, you know, bring some nice glasses with you. Fill it up. And then bring some sparkling, you know, whatever. I've got Perrier or, you know, if it's a special occasion like uh, champagne or Prosecco. Bob's your uncle. Throw a little lemon on there. Voila! Okay, so we've got our deviled egg salad sandwiches. We've got our sparkling mint lemonade and drum roll for the ice cream sandwich. And drum roll. Who wouldn't want to join you on this picnic? I'm sorry, but it looks amazing. <laughs> Now, now bring it up to the camera. We're going to do the side camera there. Look at that ice cream sandwich. Looks so cool. I can't wait to eat this, and I'm so sorry that I can't share. <laughs> well, thanks okay. so much, Jay, for, for, for everything this year. We've had an absolute blast. Um, yeah, on behalf of the of, of uh, Humane Society International Canada and the Forward Food Team, it's just been an absolute pleasure working with you.
Oh, no, no. Same, same as well. And we just had so much fun. You've educated us so much on this stuff. And you've made it, you've made plant-based food, not the stuff that we see in the grocery stores, not that it's bad, but you've given us a different perspective on it. And I just can't thank you enough on that. It's been awesome. These ideas are so perfect for home and for in restaurants and cafes and everywhere else. So it's just outstanding. So thanks so much. Thank you, Dick. It's been a blast. Awesome. So everyone else, we're going to be back tomorrow influencer fridays we are doing the pasta tomorrow my base pasta tomorrow on the show and uh, chef ellie has never tasted it before so first time for tomorrow good greater wow is how we rate things and uh we're back next week we have one more week until season two wraps up and then we're on to season three in september so but yeah more to wow. come thanks so much Bye, Jay. see you later everyone we'll have a I always say this. Get out there and eat in a restaurant. Don't eat in a box anymore. We did that enough. We're good. Get out there and support our restaurants. Awesome. Thanks. We'll see you later.